So what is information archiving? Information archiving is a process where we extract information from a legacy database or application, transform it into XML, and then load it into an XML database along with a simple configurable front end to expose the information to the end user. Today we'll focus on the ETL part of the process, specifically on the extract and transform. In order to demonstrate information archiving, we'll need some information to work with. Today I'll be using Sean Landman's baseball database. This is a great database, freely available under the Creative Commons license, and the statistics go back to the 1800s. So we'll be working with uh, baseball statistics. Today I'll be using Talend, an open source data integration tool, to conduct the demonstration. And here we have uh, the Talent application. Those of you familiar with doing development in Eclipse will recognize it. It's a, an Eclipse-based app. Um, it has this graphical workflow user interface. It's basically a code generation framework. So the flows you build here create uh, Java code behind the scenes. Um, these jobs can then be exported to zips that contain scripts that can be parameterized and run on other environments, including uh, Linux or Unix. Um, as you can see, there's a wealth of components here in the palette. Um, and today, we'll start by looking at just a couple components. The first two in my, uh, in my job here, um, the MySQL extract, and then the component that creates XML. Okay, let's get started by creating a new job uh, or job design here for demo purposes. I'm going to call the new job demo batting to XML because we're going to be transforming the batting statistics into an XML document. The first component we'll need is um, a component that will extract the data from MySQL database. I have taken Sean Landman's baseball statistics database SQL files and um, created the database, a little MySQL database on another Linux virtual machine um, for use for development purposes and um, for this demonstration. So let's look in our palette for MySQL components. I find the search quite useful in the palette because it's large and, and sometimes difficult to find things by browsing. Um, you can see here we have numerous uh, components for MySQL. Uh, the one we're looking for reads a MySQL table and extracts fields based on a SQL query. So that sounds like what we need. So I will pull that component onto the palette. And now when I select my component, I have a series of tabs down here where I can configure the component and then run it, and then run the job. Um, so let's go ahead and maximize this. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is get a connection to the database. Um, I've set it up to be called demo DB. I'm going to use the MySQL default port. The database that I use um, that I created is called Baseball. Use, uh, put in my username and password. Next, uh, you specify the table name. Uh, I happen to know that the name of the table is Batting. And I'm going to start with a very simple select star query here. Um, this component has a great um, little feature here called guess schema, which will introspect the schema of the table you've specified in the query. And it also will confirm whether or not you're getting a connection to your database. So let's go ahead and try that. 
All right, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of columns and descriptions of the columns um, showing up. So um, it looks like we're getting a connection and we can see our, our, data, our table schema. Okay, now that we have our uh, database connection and query set up, let's look at doing something with that query, namely creating XML. So we'll use an XML component for that purpose. The XML component we want is called Advanced File Output XML. Um, there's a couple other XML components that are simpler, but for our purposes, uh, we'll use this component. And here again, we'll look at uh, configuring the component, but first let's connect our components together. Um, and so this is, we're going to use a main connector here um, to connect the two components. And then we'll look at the configuration for the XML component. The XML component, uh, for the XML component, you specify an output file. I'm going to change this a little bit to another location on my local system. And I'm going to call the output batting.xml because this is the batting statistics XML. Um, there's a couple of interesting advanced settings we need to look at for the XML. Um, the first one is this funny setting where you can choose slow and memory consuming or fast with low memory consumption. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd ever want to choose the other option. Let's go with fast. Also, we're going to be creating UTF-8 encoded XML. Okay, so now we've done sort of the basic configuration of our XML component, but we still need to specify the structure of our XML document. And here, we're following a basic structure we use for all tables in our info archiving solution. Uh, this gives us sort of a predictability to our XML structure, allows us to write unit tests for a chain of custody between the database and the resulting XML. Um, and so I'm going to um, set that up here. So I can specify a tree in this dialog, and my root component is going to be called batting, um, following our all uppercase convention where the root element is the table name. Then I'm going to add a sub-element called batting row. And this is the uh, element that will contain the information in each row that results from our query. <clears throat> Now I need to put the information from the query into the row, and, and I'm going to just take all of this, all of these columns in mass, and drop them in as sub-elements of batting row. Now um, the column names don't follow our um, XML element con convention, so we can change the semantics of the XML that's mapped to each column by clicking in in this box. And I will change a couple here. I won't go through all of them. Um, player ID, probably make this one year ID. I know um, uh, R stands for runs, probably make that a little more verbose, um, and etc. cetera. Um, I'll leave the rest out for brevity. Um, so now we've sort of specified our XML schema and how our query results map to the schema. And so now we are ready to try our query. In order to run, or uh, excuse me, to try our job, in order to run a job, uh, you have a, a tab here uh, where you run and you have a little console where you can see the results and the output. Okay, I have an error in my job here. Um, and um, it was because I forgot to configure one part of uh, the XML specification. You need to designate one of the rows as the loop element. This is important because this tells uh, Talend, you know, which which element it's going to iterate on and um, and create a new element for each row in the in the resulting in the query results. So let's see if that um, if that works better.
All right, it looks like we're running now. You can see it gives you a little graphical output of your progress. And it's also quite fast. You can see that we've gone through almost 98,000 rows in 6.6 .6 seconds. And this is running in a Windows development environment rather than on a, um, you know, a dedicated box for the ETL process. So uh, let's look and see what we got. Um, I have the document open here from previous tests. It's been changed and updated with the run that we just did. So I'll click yes to reload it. And as you can see here, we've constructed XML. Um, that has uh, should have almost 98,000 batting row elements, and each element then contains um, the information, the player ID, the year, um, and all kinds of statistics, including the number of runs, and you know doubles, triples, RBIs, etc.